Hey, everybody. Welcome to Data Drivers Hackathon number three, where we're going to get started with Splunk's IT service intelligence. I am Corey Minton, IT strategist at Splunk, and I'm in the same room with a good friend of mine, Kyle Prinz. Hey, uh, my name's Kyle. I'm also an IT strategist at Splunk, and uh, it's really nice to be in the same room as you. It is. Uh, as yeah. folks who have been double vaccinated, and are following the CDC's guidelines of, uh, of being vaccinated and it's safe to uh, to congregate. Uh, we are taking full advantage of it, so uh, we are super happy to be, uh, you know, returning to some normalcy. Yeah. And uh, this data driver series is a ton of fun. We are going to uh, to get started. We've got a great hackathon for you today. I think you're going to have some fun with what we're uh, what we're going to get into. So uh, as we said, today's uh, hackathon is all about getting started with ITSI. We we started off our series over the last two months, you know, really focused on getting data in and getting data in from our uh, our big gaming PCs using the <laughs> uh, using the smart agent for Splunk Observability Cloud. Then the next week we worked on getting data in from iRacing. And, uh, and now we've got a bunch of data flowing. Now it's time to get started building cool stuff. So we are here because Data Drivers is a series of races and hackathons. In the races, we're using iRacing.com to go racing as a way to create data to give us an interesting and fun data set to play with uh, in Splunk. And then in the hackathons, which you're part of here today, uh, what we're doing is we're giving folks access to an environment where they can get hands on with Splunk in an interesting way. So again, the idea is you know, go racing, have some fun with racing simulators. The growth of this, you know, sim platform has been phenomenal over the last uh, few years. I don't know mm. about you, but it's been it's been fun to be able to yeah. get a wheel on the desk and just go rip around the track. And it's been pretty cool because my iRacing just told me, hey, you've been doing this for about a year now. And, uh, you know, when I first got this, I, again, I know we've said this plenty of times, but it is not <laughs> a game. It is a racing sim platform. It is way different. And when we first started this, I thought, yeah, okay, it's interesting. And now it's, you know, you're, you're trying to find time in your schedule to go and do this. So it's uh, it's really fun, and it is a wild experience to get behind the wheel of, of these cars and really see the power that they have yeah. uh, in a virtual world. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. Well, and and, and like anything uh, that we've done, we, we actually got into this whole racing thing because of last year's uh, virtual race to Splunks.conf. Mm. Uh, but what we didn't do during that, which is what we're trying to fix here, is we didn't invite you all to come learn with us. Like yeah. We didn't invite people to get hands-on with Splunk the way that we were getting hands on with it as we were mm. building the things that we eventually showed at .conf. Um, and so that's what we're doing here today. But the best part is that not only are we racing and that's fun, we're creating a data set that's fun. We're using Splunk, which hopefully will help you all learn how to use Splunk, maybe in your day jobs, build some skills that can make you more employable or maybe you're in a promotion, who knows. Uh, <laughs> but we're also getting to hang out with the team from McLaren's uh, Shadow Esports team called McLaren Shadow. And we'll hear later from uh, from Tobin Lee, manager of that team. He's going to be guiding our work here today. So as a recap, our races, as we said, we've raced at Barber and Brands Hatch. This week, yesterday, you saw the race over on Splunk's Twitch channel where we raced at the uh, Spa Circuit. Things did not go so well for me. <laughs> Kyle, you did well. Qualified where you, uh, where you yeah. ended. That's good. Yeah, I finished where I qualified, and I was pretty happy about that. You know, because in the race world, if you can qualify and stay the same or do better, that's good. If you do worse, that's not so good. So uh, <laughs> fortunately, I was able to do perfectly average. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we'll see how I go at the end of this month uh, at Phillip Island uh, in Australia. But yeah. uh, Well, actually, that's a good point, though. So uh, we actually posted this uh, question to our participants who have registered. Oh, yeah. And as a reminder, if you haven't registered for the series, there's a link in the notes below. We'll put it in the chat here in just a second. Uh, where you can sign up to register with us. But one of the things that we recognized was the McLaren's shadowy sports team doesn't actually <laughs> race the GT3 cars on right. iRacing very often. And so we're contemplating, and maybe I'd ask you all this question, would you like to see us go do a race instead of a road racing race with the GT3 class of cars? Would you like to see us do a NASCAR race, like a, prop a proper NASCAR race in the modern NASCAR cars? Like maybe Daytona. Like I'm thinking Daytona. I think okay. it's, it's it's legendary. Yeah. I think the data would be interesting. So, yeah. anyways, put your thoughts in the uh, in the chat if you think NASCAR would be fun. I think it would. I think it'd make for a good broadcast. Yeah, I've um I've practiced on a NASCAR before, and you know, and you think it's just drive fast, turn left, and and what you don't realize is those things are crazy <laughs> squirrely. <They are. laughs> Especially if you're not so good at something like this. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think we'll have a good time with it. Yeah. Nice. Well, so anyway, stay tuned. We're going to do some racing next later this month, but uh, jury's still out if it's GT3 or NASCAR. Um, Hmm. We'll see. And then we're going to uh, the Twin Ring Motegi over in Japan, and then we'll wrap things up at Sonoma. And again, the races, what's super fun about it is you get to watch people who are terrible at racing, i.e., Corey and Kyle, uh, but you also get to watch professionals. Mm. Uh, so actually, uh, Tomic from the Shadow McLaren uh, development team joined us and put on a clinic with a fellow Splunker who yeah. was amazing. Another A-class racer, John Hayward, came in second, and they are just uh, dominant forces. So it's check out the races. Fair. They're super fun. Uh, and the hackathons, I think we've said this, but uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, one, mm. all the hackathons, the videos have kind of, uh, they've run their course on Twitch. Uh, but if you want to go back and watch those, we'll drop a link in the chat here in a minute to uh, you can go watch them on YouTube. If you if you didn't do it before and you missed them for some reason, you can go follow along and catch up. Just make sure you register via the uh, f- via the link and you'll get access to those labs. So you can actually get a login you know, username and password to the lab and you can do it yourself. And if not, we're trying to make all this stuff available to you if you want to build this in your own lab. So still go ahead and register. Uh, but we're putting all of the links to things like our scripts that we build, the documentation that we're using. It's all available uh, via our Discord channel. So definitely make sure and pay attention. And as you see, we we got the data in the first two. Today, we're going to get started with ITSI, which I think is going to be fun. But it's like the we're scratching the surface, just starting to get going yeah. with ITSI, which I think will be fun. Um, and then we're going to start building on that with ITSI on you know really digging into services and understanding service dependencies. And we'll explain what all this means. Then we're going to build some really slick race day visualizations that imagine like would be up on the screen in front of the pit wall, you know, or for somebody like Tobin running the eSports team that he'd have on screen, help giving him cues, you know, visually of what he should be coaching the drivers against. And then we're going to turn it all into action, you know, showing some really cool stuff to wrap this thing up. And uh, I will say, spoiler alert, there is going to be some data drivers things happening at .conf. And if you're not familiar, .conf is Splunk's annual user conference. It is back, and we're actually having it in person in Vegas. So uh, if you need an excuse to go to Vegas for a conference, go to conf.splunk.com and hang out. And we can also tell you that if you're into Boss of Ops and Observability, that's our formerly Botten. Yeah. We have a racing scenario in there for you, and there's going to be some new stuff coming out. So be sure and register for the boo that's happening at .conf. Okay. So as, as a reminder, if you want to participate, if you want to get hands-on with us, meaning you want to come race with us on iRacing, or you want to get hands-on with the labs, use the QR code that we saw before, use the link that we'll put in the chat, sign up, and we'll give you access to all the things you need to come do this with us side by side. The other thing is, if you just want to continue to passively consume this, feel free, hang out on Twitch, ask questions in the chat. We're here to help. We've got some, uh, some talented folks from Splunk here to help you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now to get to the point of the hackathon, if you're new, uh, we'll go over a little bit of the format. If you're, if you've been around a bit, you probably understand what's going on. So, uh, for this first part of the hackathon, we're going to give a challenge introduction. So kind of explain the ideology around the whys and the hows of, of what our goal is today. Uh, we'll get a McLaren shadow esports perspective, which is going to be Tobin Lee talking a bit around our challenge uh, perspective and see what data and what aspects and what visualizations, uh, of that would be relevant for him, you know, because data can or cannot be relevant depending on what lens you're looking at. So we want to make sure that we're hitting the proper lens for that to achieve that outcome for him. Uh, we're also going to give a bit of a Splunk technical overview. You know, as you know, we've got quite a bit of cool tech here at Splunk, and we want to make sure that we have a proper background understanding of what little product within Splunk that we're going to be covering. Uh, so we'll give you a bit of an overview and some history around that. Uh, and then we'll do the collaborative hacking section. Now, Uh, I know we've said this before and we'll say it again, hop on Discord, sign up. I think we can drop a uh, Discord link uh, there in the chat. Uh, You're going to want to sign up there uh, and join into the Hackers channel. And that's where we uh, drop everything there. And it's a fun little community to to collaborate on, to see, you know, post some questions and we'll take some answers there. We also will be providing some homework with a bonus challenge. Now, one thing that I don't think we did properly well during virtualrace.com was, you know, you did get to go in and play and look at the data, but you didn't exactly get to go in and play with it yourself. So now you get full user access. You can play with the data, build some weird, cool things, uh, whatever you'd like to do over the next bit. And we'll have some links there uh, in Discord as well. And then uh, to wrap up at the end of the hour, we'll be providing a preview of the next session to give you some ideas to get those wheels turning in your head as to what's going to be showing up. Uh, at the tail end of this month. Uh, For sure. 
Yeah. It's going to be fun. So your challenge today, Kyle, we've got a fun one. I'm excited about this. Yeah. So we're finally getting started with Splunk ITSI. You know, the, the first two sessions of these was really just focused on getting data in. Now, whether yeah. that was getting computer data in or getting iRacing data in, both of those were just kind of focused on let's get the data into Splunk. Now we finally get to focus on the fun part, applying metadata around that, applying scope around that, and solving a problem and visualizing what we want to do. Um, so we used Splunk Observability Cloud. Uh, that's where the data is getting ingested from our machine. And then we're going to be querying Splunk Observability Cloud uh, and pulling that into Splunk ITSI. Uh, specifically today, we're going to be focused on tire health. And I noticed that we spelled tire uh, the, the correct way. Yes. Uh, for our audience, because we should always be mindful of the consumers of the things that we build. Very and true. as it turns out, the team at McLaren Shadow is uh, is is based over in the UK, and that is the way they spell tire. Yeah. So that was an intentional misspelling. Fair enough. From It's not spelled the freedom way. That's fine. It's I mean, fine. we'll let this one slide for you, but don't worry about it again. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so the challenge is, is this, right? We're, we're pulling data in, and we're going to show you some cool stuff. But more than anything else, I think it's probably good for us to get some perspective from our friends at McLaren Shadow. And again, we're gonna jump in for a quick video to, uh, to get some perspective. We'll be right back. Welcome back to another McLaren Shadow Perspectives. We are joined by Tobin Lee, manager of McLaren's Shadow Esports team. Tobin, congrats saw that your team took P3 in, the, uh, in your inaugural uh, run in the V10R League. Tell us a little bit about what that was like and kind of your key takeaways from that awesome racing series. Yeah, it was one of the first series that McLaren have gotten involved with outside of F1 Esports, which is where it traditionally sat, as you may you know, not be too surprised to hear. But it, we did, well. I think uh, it was really good fun. A lot of challenges with going on to a new game that we hadn't competed on too much before, but we had a new roster and they all absolutely smashed it. So, yeah, really good fun. And I think it hopefully will mark the start of us spreading more and more games as we uh, progress Shadow forwards from here. Excellent. Well, for those that missed our last chat, you, uh, as the manager of Aaron's uh, Shadow Esports team, you told us that when we were building the dashboards and some of the gauges in Observability Cloud, that really a lot of game centers on tires, tire temp, tire health, tire well, wear, that kind of thing. Remind us why that was so critical sort of component for you as the manager in the race. Yeah, I mean, tires are really just the core, uh, no pun intended, of everything uh, is going on in the race. I think that it can tell you when you push, when you pit, you know, how it, it just it, it gives a really good insight to everything that's going on in terms of what's what's actually going on for the driver. So it's uh, the main indicator I say we use to just track how a race is going and, and a lot of our decisions come off of the back of that. Now, pit strategy tends to be kind of like at the center of what a team principal prepares for and executes during a race. Beyond tires, what other KPIs or, or pit strategies uh, do you guys have that, that you would make decisions on? Um, I think the, the main one away from tires is a fuel. Um, so obviously mm. fuel, you, you could underfuel a car and it'll be lighter and faster, but that would have implications on the, the strategy that we're going with the pits. Um, you know, I think that overall, it's to be honest, it's mainly tires and fuel and how they intertwine and work together because it's both affects both things um then also just uh, generally as well i think in terms of the pits we can use them to get track position as well so undercutting and overcutting can be critical if uh, two cars are next to each other with similar pace but then yeah the pit stop can shake it all up so a lot to consider uh, that's for sure yeah sure so i i know that is one of the things that you're you know again it's the it's the thing you can affect and that you can really coach the on. And as you said before, you know, it's, you don't want to put too much information in front of the drivers because they're focused on, as you said, uh, you know, driving. And so you really want to give them simple instruction, push, you know, push the pace, load up, those kind of things. But like as manager of the team, you're, you, you've got other things besides pit strategy that I'm sure you're kind of watching and you're curious about that affect sort of 
um, do I tell them to push? Do I tell them, uh, you know, they harder? What are maybe some of those other, uh, if you think about like telemetry and metrics, what are some of those other things that we're like trying to answer? Like, what are you trying to figure out uh, during a race that maybe our, uh, our hackers can figure out? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think it's a big question as well. Um, <laughs> but I think uh, overall, I think that the data for things like when a driver's pushing, it's, it's about how they're changing their mentality and then how that's reflected in what the actual inputs are and i think that for a driver it's quite uh, it's almost like a sixth as to what's happening however i think with data we'll be able to look at these kind of events in the race and different mindset kind of trends if that makes sense mm-hmm. and then actually draw links between what what the drivers are doing and different modes optimize everything in a way that we can't currently so yeah uh, again very big question there's a lot yeah. to it, but uh, yeah. But trying to answer that question of like, how do the inputs impact those metrics and the things that you were talking about before around tire health, around pace, that kind of stuff. Um, and at the end of the day, we're trying to keep the cars on track and not have them go sliding on track, which uh, I did that a few times uh, this last week. And it's not advisable <laughs> if you'd like to win races. Well, Tobin, thanks so much for joining us again on uh, on this hack on uh, for data drivers. And uh, I hope London is continuing to treat you well. That Veloce office is really, really rad. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I'm super jealous. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Pleasure. All right, everybody. Let's get back to the <laughs> hacking. All right. We're back. It's always good to hear from uh, from Tobin. He's uh, a class act. Former professional racer turned professional sports racer turned manager of the team. Uh, and for those of you kids watching at home, the young man legit paid for his education uh, and business school at university uh, through his gaming career. So if your mom and dad tell you that gaming's bad, it's only bad if you're bad at it. If you're really good <laughs> at it, then, then there's an opportunity. That's if you're right. bad at it, like me, don't bet on it. Like That's you right. should probably it stays a hobby. <laughs> That's right. Keep it a hobby if not. So anyways, well, good to hear from Tobin. And as you heard, our main goal in our session today is to try to build that tire health view. And to do that, we are joined by none other than John Labah. John is, John, welcome. How you doing, buddy? What's going on, guys? <laughs> Man, we are super happy to have you. Oh, we, uh, this, this slide is crazy. What have yeah. you done? Yeah, I. Uh, so, so John was, was frantically uh, working today and uh, asked so graciously that I set up his about me slide. Uh, so, John, if you'd like to <laughs> through some of these, uh, I tried to work in as much as I could uh, based around some of this. Uh, oh, you have, you have. Of these. Um, you know, I, feel I, free I to. He is, he's yeah. great at ITSI. That's probably the most important thing. Yes. Uh, he's he is a uh, he is the mastermind behind Boss of Ops and Observability. Kind uh-huh. of got the button thing started. Let's see. What yeah. else do we like about here? Jason S. on LinkedIn gave him a recommendation, which is just really nice. He, uh, he, he does have a tendency to buy Milky Ways in bulk. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, he, he recently he, cleaned his office. You guys. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> and he also has a beautiful headshot that you can Photoshop in different backgrounds. So I noticed that a little bit. Uh... Laser background. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, new profile picture for you, John. Uh, you're welcome. <sighs> All right. Well, John, we're glad to have you, buddy. Uh, as we said, everybody, we're going to do a quick sort of introduction to Splunk IT Service Intelligence. And John is going to be our subject matter expert today. And he's going to dive through just, again, a quick overview so we understand some concepts. And then we're going to go get hands on the lab together. So if you have questions while John's giving us this update, put them over in the chat. We're active over on the Discord channel as well. But John, thanks for being here, buddy. We are super glad to have you. You're going to be around for a couple of shows. And the show is all yours, my man. All right. Um, so uh, ITSI, one of my favorite topics. Uh, I, I actually kind of want to introduce you guys to this um, in, in a little bit of a different way. So we're going to use our racing data uh, from today. And we're going we're gonna to work through how the cars and the tracks and everything are Super important to how we want to build this as a service. So 
when we talk about a service in ITSI, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Corey, can you see my screen? Is it just me? We, or is it we cannot see your screen yet. We are. Uh, do you want to use the slides or do you want to show your 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 video? I want to share my screen. All right, buddy. If you just share your screen again, we I will put it up there. All I right. just didn't have it. I wasn't showing it because I thought we were going to use the slides. You're good, buddy. Now I I like to talk about it live. All right, hang on a second. <laughs> Let's do this live. <laughs> So uh, we got your screen up, Bubba. All right. So when we talk about a service or a business service, we're, we're always talking about uh, what we want to monitor, what is important to us as a end user. Uh, and in this case, you know, we've got a, a whole bunch of nonsense here that doesn't really probably matter to us. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to monitor our car or Kyle's car. Um, so we're going to replay the data that Kyle raced with uh, last week to actually monitor that service as a car or monitor that car as a service. So uh, we're going to kind of start to trim this down a little bit. Um, we'll start by going into the service analyzer and we're already there, right? Um, and we're going to create a new service by going into services and yeah, there we go we've got a bunch of information here we're going to start creating uh kyle's car and for those of you who are following along online if you're uh we sent an email out with the credentials to get to the lab environment so uh you're welcome to follow along with john um and uh, if you didn't get them in the lab environment in the email uh, we did put them in the Discord channel under Hackers Text, so you can log into the environment and, right. and follow along uh, as well. So just just a heads up. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so so we've got uh, a whole bunch of information here. Like we could go in and build uh, a lot of things out of this pre-built stuff, but you know what? Today we want to build our own service. We want to build our own KPIs based on a car. So we're going to manually add our service context. context. Uh, of course, yeah, to, be, to be fair, right? So ITSI, it's it's real, uh, <laughs> where it lives in, in, the, in the enterprise where people use it is for monitoring a bunch of IT assets that are like all you guys and gals that run, you know, that are in IT operations. We all run the same stuff. We've got, you know, on-prem stuff, servers, network storage, You've got yep. orchestration things, VMware, Kubernetes, containers, right? You've got networking. You've got all these things. And so we've a lot of that is out of the box with ITSI. It makes it super easy. We're applying this to racing. So we're going yeah, to go. It's not out of the box, right? Like it's, it's, out of the box it, things, right? Yeah. So we're going to build our own stuff today, which is cool. Uh, but, of course, all that fun stuff is there for us if we, if we ever wanted it. Yep. So we're going to build uh, our own service today. And you know what? I'm going to monitor Kyle's car because he showed up first. And so we'll say uh, we're going to manually add the context. We're going to do all that. He Just showed up that. first only because he was smart enough to turn on his iRacing script that we built. Right. Last year. <laughs> the uh, one that he wrote uh, <laughs> to monitor. King of automation over here. I was about to say, well, if you write the script, you know, you kind of are allowed a few perks. So, you know. <laughs> I forgot, some... Let's be honest. I forgot to turn mine on. That's why I'm 10 minutes late to this. Yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> first heard... doesn't always equal fastest. I either, was in the race so... and Kyle said, Corey, I don't see data coming in. And I'm like, oh, man, I forgot to turn the script on. Well, it's a perk of being a good scripter, right? I'm not Nate Smalley, perks of being a good Python scripter. There you go. All right. We're creating a service. So we're going to use my car as a service then. So then we are. Okay. So just for everybody's context, right? A service is, is a, is a collection of this underlying thing called KPIs that we're going to build, right? Yeah. So uh, the way that I like to think about it is a, a service is a box of KPIs or a bucket of KPIs. Um, and so we'll, if we can get Kyle's car created here. <laughs> is this the slide here? Yeah. It I was going to pull the slide up just because the slide I felt like had a uh, uh, good description of it. Sorry, I was looking at, I was going through them. 
Yeah, so services are a logical grouping of things, right? And then the KPIs that we're going to build are helpful for giving us things like we'll aggregate those to build health scores that will end up giving us the visualization that John showed earlier on that's going to be uh, super useful. All right. So we now have Kyle's car, which is called S. <laughs> Uh, that's a good letter. You know, it rounds yeah. things out. Right, right. So I'm, I'm a big fan of S. So uh, what we're going to do here, uh, again, we have all of this really cool stuff that's already built out, but none of this applies to cars, right, yeah. Kyle? I mean. Right, yeah. I mean, as much as I appreciate, you know, the health score of a cloud, uh, <laughs> I don't see how this is going to make me faster. And yeah. going off of a few talks around Tobin Lee's, uh, you know, uh, feedback from us. Uh, he seemed right. CPU. Yeah. And, and so, he, it seems weather and tires, but weather wouldn't relate back to a car service, but. Tires. So what we're going to do is, is what we're going to do, uh, create a generic KPI. And I actually really hate the term generic KPI because it's not generic at all. It is very, very specific. So we're going to be looking at, uh, left. What is left front tire temperature? Yep. Yeah. Because uh, if I can provide some context on that, the yeah, first bit that you go around uh, the track, you need to warm up your tires because if they aren't up to proper temperature, yep. uh, tire. 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 I, yeah. Hey, John, will you do me a favor? Will you bring your uh, browser window to full screen? And then zoom in a little bit because we're having, you can actually just go full screen because we've got your whole screen share. Yeah, um, that'll give us a little bit more real estate. Now we're talking. We had somebody commenting on the uh, on right. Discord, but there they couldn't go. see the text very well. Hopefully, is, that's better. Is, is it tire or tire? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's T Y R E, I think, yeah. for our uh, for Tobin. It's mega tire. <laughs> All right. Mega, it's brill. It's so, brill. Uh, so th this new uh, general KPI that we're going to be creating, which is not general at all, it's very specific. Uh, we're going to create this KPI, and we're going to start monitoring this uh, very regularly. And what we're going to do with that is um, we got a whole bunch of different ways that we can monitor it. But, uh, uh, Corey, I don't know if you want to talk about how we yeah. brought this data in. For sure. Um, but we've got four different methods of looking at it. Uh, we've done some really cool stuff, though, to bring this into a metric search. So I'm going to let Corey talk about how uh, how we got this data in. Yep. So here, here's the story. We, we used Splunk Observability Cloud as our uh, path to get metrics in at a very uh, simple way, using APIs uh, in a modern uh, sort of metrics-oriented deployment. Um, and Splunk's Observability Cloud has a ton of great features that we've been able to use and will continue to use as we go forward in building dashboards and alerting for, uh, for the use of these, you know, building visualizations that matter to a racing manager. But we wanted to use Splunk's IT service intelligence, and you really have two options when thinking about using Splunk IT service intelligence with uh, metrics. And one is uh, you can either have data in a Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud metric store, or you can use the uh, the, sim, the sim commands to basically go query data that's in Splunk Observability Cloud uh, and bring that data, you know, or bring those queries back into ITSI. To simplify things for our hackers, we actually used the Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring add-on, which is a uh, an add-on that's available in Splunk Base that makes it super easy for those organizations that want to have metrics both in an observability platform like Splunk Observability Cloud, but they also want to have those metrics maybe on-prem mm -hmm. in a ITSI deployment that's on-prem in their enterprise. Those metrics can coexist in both places. There's something called the Signal Flow API that allows that data to stream from Splunk Observability Cloud into Splunk uh, Enterprise, if specifically on-prem, and in the Splunk metric store that we're using for Splunk ITSI. So that's what we did. And, and really, it's a... It's actually a quite simple process. The Splunk infrastructure monitoring add-on comes with a number of out-of-the-box 
um, tools that would pull infrastructure and data from Splunk Observability Cloud into uh, Splunk. Now, the reason why we say normal out of the box, things like AWS, GCP, Azure, VMware, Kubernetes, all that stuff that you would normally use Splunk infrastructure monitoring for, and you want to get that data out, that's all pre-built. But to make it easy for you, our friends, we didn't we didn't want to have you guys have to you know build any sort of uh, signal flow, although it is quite simple. We literally used an Excel spreadsheet with some stanzas to create it. And like this next slide, it shows uh, a very- <laughs> Corey, that looks complicated. Well, it's, what's really funny is it's not complicated at all. Once we figured out the stanza, and I wish we'd had a zoomed in picture, you just have to understand the signal flow API and how it likes to have call out dimensions. And all I did was literally create a table in Excel and just add the stanzas to all the metric names. Because remember, we've got over 300 metrics coming out of iRacing. So in the script that Kyle so kindly created, which is, by the way, available in GitHub, we'll put the link in. Uh, yeah. We'll put the link in the chat that if you want to get data from your uh, Splunk Observability Cloud environment over to your Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud environment uh, metric store for ITSI, you can copy and paste this text file right into the Splunk infrastructure monitor and add on uh, setup and it will uh, begin flowing data. So that's the story. It's really what we did is for our lab, for our friends uh, of you that are uh, that are hacking with us. Uh, it's just we, we basically picked up all the metrics from SOC and dropped them into Splunk. Now, I do want to say a quick caveat, which is, um, you know, we, we hear from time to time that uh, Splunk is expensive. That's that's one of the things that people, you know, say from time to time. But let me, let me assure you this. One, Splunk is one high value. We know that. But we don't actually charge you. Splunk doesn't charge you for. Yeah, this, this costs literally nothing, right? Yeah, it doesn't cost you anything. Right? You, If you have metrics that are already in Splunk Observability Cloud and you're a Splunk Observability Cloud customer and you're using it and you've got metrics there and you also want them to live in Splunk Enterprise metrics for, <coughs> for things like ITSI, you don't get charged for metrics that ingest using the SignalFlow API. So ingest away it costs you nothing extra it just makes it a bit easier we could show you the the sim commands to pull this stuff in itsi but for those of you just getting started with itsi it's easier to use the metrics uh, as they exist in Splunk enterprise hey so can i can i continue to nerd out like i, yeah, nerd. I, I really want to show everybody uh like the stuff that i'm excited about here in itsi so um you know there's a whole bunch of stuff here like the metric search um which Corey has, uh, you know, uh, very graciously showed. Like, all we have to do here is select the correct metrics name. They're but, all there. <laughs> what's that? What's that? They're all there. It's fantastic. I mean, we got three hundred yeah. plus metrics. Three hundred metrics that we could use in any way, shape, or form that we want to. Like, it's yeah. it's so beautiful. Actually, and one thing, John, I think you glossed over it earlier, but I want to make sure we repeat this because this is kind of a cool. We're talking about dirt now. So John actually has the data replaying from a race that we ran uh, last week. We ran a one hour long <laughs> endurance race for this purpose and we recorded the data and he's actually got the data replaying as if it's live. So if you're logged into this lab environment, uh, much like we do with Boss of Ops and Observability, we've got a data gen running that's actually making the data look like it's coming in live right now so that when we build these things, there's actual data being spun up and I'm not, or Kyle's not, or somebody's not having to run the race. Yeah, yeah. Nick, Kyle's not racing right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Trying to race and do this together. Too we much. discovered that last month. Yeah. That's true, we did. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I don't really know where to go from there, uh, but okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so left front tire, let's find that iRacing metric for left front Live, tire. Left front tire, okay. So there's so many metrics here. So we'll do uh, iRacing dot left front tire what uh yeah the so the left front tire temp cm is carcass middle okay uh, wow so, yeah so there's it, we have a glossary that's also in the github uh of the it's the vars.txt file that explains what each of those uh those metrics are and <laughs> and what unit of measure they're in so uh it's really useful because you know it's good to know what the data is if you're going to try to yeah, I mean, it, what, what's really important is that you can actually find all the data that's important to you and go go uh, attack it right in yeah. in whatever you need to do. So, okay, so we found our our new uh, data. We're gonna uh, kind of gloss over this a little bit because 
I want to uh, talk to you guys about this in the next episode. Um, but entities and services are super important um, when we're building this. So uh, we've got our left front tire temperature. We're going to build this out as a KPI. This is a key, perform key performance indicator that we want to measure as often as we can. So we're going to go ahead and say, hey, we want to measure this every minute. And we want to measure this on average or at maximum. Um, I think every I kind of makes sense, probably because if you think about a tire, like it may get really hot in a in a braking uh, scenario or in a hard acceleration scenario. So you want to go maximum on this one? No, 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 no. What I was going to say is I like the average because I want to look at it okay. if it's getting heated for an extended period of time. So if the average gets higher, because a peak doesn't really matter. I mean, if it gets really hot for a second, I'm not as concerned. Yeah. It's, it's you know, if you're skidding into a wall, such as I do, <laughs> that does cool back <laughs> after a bit. It, so it yeah, I, I would say average would be good. Yeah. I mean, so... What I always say when, we, when, like, this is the most important screen in ITSI, uh, when we're kind of configuring what we want to think about, um, knowing what we're measuring and how we're measuring it is super important. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll talk about, like, the calculation window. Uh, we could do the, the last minute. Generally, the KPI search schedule and the calculation window should be exactly the same. Um, but... We want to think about those things when we're going after them, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we've got little helpful things that sell us, like uh, you know, the data gaps and the the null null values. What is really nice is that we actually get a a, a really clear description of what the calculation is doing for us. So. <laughs> It makes it human readable. Yeah. yeah, human readable. Even me, I can sit down and say, okay, I understand what that's after. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. So once we're done with that, um, we get this, you know, left front tire cal calculation. We can do it. Uh, we decided what, Corey, it was in Celsius. It is in C, yep. So we'll get that. Um, a monitoring lag. ITSI actually does a really good job of putting that together for you without worrying about it uh, too much. And then we're done. Um, backfill is, is something that we don't really need to worry about today. Um, <clears throat> but then once we're done, we've got our threshold uh, already set for us. So we have some knowledge from Tobin, right? Corey? Actually, from uh, from one of our hackers, actually, they posted a uh, they posted a link to a, uh, a a NASA, which is the National. It's a sports car association. I can't remember what the, the exact acronym is, but it was a guide. It was kind of like an introduction to tire temp, tire settings, tire thoughts, and it basically said that like ideal tire temperature for most tires is somewhere between 160 and 220 degrees Fahrenheit which is like 70 to um, 70 to like 105 Celsius. Yeah. And Celsius. So like we'd need our, if the tires would be an optimal temperature, that would be, and they were at like around 70 degrees Celsius. And okay. if they were at the upper end of the optimal would be around 105. Uh, and anything so below do something like this, right? We would set, kind of a rainbow, if yeah. you would. Hmm. John, I wonder if in the previously you said that we were going to cover in the next uh, show, but in that split into split by entity, if you'd have put in driver, would we have popped data here? I think we would have. Yeah, for okay. sure. That's what I'm curious. I think we maybe maybe go back and add that or we can do it on the next one. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, our, our, our data driver didn't show up today. <laughs> <laughs> it happens you had a wreck on the way into data driving it's not data driven yeah. so okay. these so these thresholds uh, help help us understand what are these thresholds going to do for us so each of these thresholds is going to tell us you know kind of uh either based on 
our knowledge of how the KPI uh, or the tire temperature in this case is uh, performing or based on the historical performance of that KPI, like this helps us understand what is going on. So we're going to we're going to set these and I wish we had a little bit of data here. <laughs> All right. Well, is that yeah, is, okay. are you in our are you in our test instance or are you in the spun up one for the hackers? I'm in the spun up one for the hackers. Gotcha. Well, looks like we got a little bit of a bug, which never happens on demos. I don't know yeah. if you know this, but live demos are demo uh, live. Yeah. With, yeah, the demo monkeys got us. Um, but the, the the thresholds are kind of interesting because if you when we have data flowing, and apologies, we don't have that flowing, ITSI is actually intelligent enough to go ahead and start applying thresholds based on what it's seen uh, and has some advanced capabilities called adaptive thresholds that can actually start to understand statistical normalcy and you can apply different models to calculate those thresholds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. <laughs> All right, so we don't have data flowing. Do we want to bounce back to the slides for just a second, explain what some of the things that we're showing, or do you just want to keep pressing it? Oh, you got other environments up. This will be good. Yep. Uh, so what we do with all of those KPIs, once we do it, uh, once we actually understand what they're going, which uh, all of these things are showing zero, which isn't great. Um, <laughs> Uh oh, demo yeah. monkeys are getting us. It happens from time to time. Uh, everything looks happy up here. Um, so this is go. our demo environment, <laughs> folks. Uh, sorry about that. Um, funny. So then, each of these KPIs then are basically have gone through the same process of what we've done before, yeah. right, John? And then, right. one, and they're color coded in a way that's based on those thresholds. So that if we know that the idea is, is that it would call attention to things that are, you know, outside of either, as we said, based on our subject matter expertise and thresholds that we set or based on what ITSI is calculating. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> so once we, uh, once we have uh, set up our thresholds and, you know, maybe, maybe we'll go back to that. Uh, real quick. So uh, what, once we're looking at our, our KPIs, um, give us just a second. Oh, look, see, he's already building it. See, DisruptWorks, IRIS and service. <laughs> Got people in there building. I like it. See, yeah. hackers get in there and build stuff. Yeah. Oh, are they building cars? Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like Anthony's in there. Anthony uh, from Disrupt DisruptWorks is uh, in there creating the service. I love um, it. I, I just love saw it. it uh, I just saw it in there. That's good. Good to hear, man. Uh, where, where's Anthony at? We're gonna uh, find Dis it. DisruptWorks Works. iRacing service. Nice. All right. Are you going to go mess with his? Look at it. He's, he's trying to do it himself, and you're messing with it. <laughs> no, nope, I'm not messing with it. I'm just going to demo it live. All right, let's do this. Let's hit new and see. Let's build one. I think maybe we build. Do you think if we build right. it, if we split yeah, it? We can, we can build a new KPI, right? So, okay. Yeah. So, we wanted to build a uh, uh, Disruptor iRacing service. So, they're probably looking at Corey's car, I would imagine. Maybe. I was going to say, why don't we look at... um. Why don't we look at tire wear? Because remember, we talked about how with Tobin, the tire temp is one, like overall health. Um, but tire wear would be another KPI okay. that, would be, that would be interesting to look at if you start to, you know, if you were going to build a health score that's based on multiple KPIs, then wear would be a pretty big indicator. So here you'd have the iRacing dot LR or LF, either one, yeah, LR wear. Okay. Where, you know, that's the right value. That's fine. And so then split by entity, we definitely, no, 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 don't, don't press next, press, press yes there. Cause I think we need to, uh, can't, 
Oh, right. you can't. Okay. Sorry, my bad. So uh, we would do it every minute because we want it as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And we'll do uh, the average of that. And now that that wear is typically coming off of um, that's a percentage going off of the vars.txt. Uh, so that's a percentage number coming off of percent of tire left for that value. Right. Okay. So then that thresholding dashboard would be, or that that service, then we would design that to be green at the top and red at the bottom, right? Or did you just, yeah. I just, I just skipped right over it. Okay. <laughs> So the thresholding, uh, yeah, we would absolutely uh, set our custom threshold right around here. So uh, this is now a percentage, right? So mm -hmm. we would add probably what, three or four thresholds? Yeah, probably just, yeah. I would think just like, hey, be aware. You're kind of, you're kind of getting low. Hey, you're getting it's getting bad. Yeah, because as I'm racing, you know, I'm not too concerned until we're getting to like, all right, I need to be thinking like about twenty-five percent ish. Yeah, remaining. like yeah, hey, you, in the next two or three laps, maybe four, you need to come back, and that probably plays into then with racing strategy of how mindful yeah. do you want to be and and how in the driver's yeah. head do you want to be too, right? It's true. And then to think about this too. So again, knowing your data, one, this data, this metric is a. Uh, decimal value meant to represent percentage so anything wow. you put in would uh, need yeah. to be zero dot something for the percentage five. value yep right and then uh, and it is remind me kyle is is tire wear it's it's tire remaining right right, right. so so, it's so remaining left. would be like the base severity would be bad yeah base severity would be bad zero would be bad yes uh high would be yeah, so we need to flip that, right? Yeah, so I think we would uh, basically delete the first two. Yeah, you can get rid of the high and the mediums up there. Those can the go The top away. ones, the top ones. Okay. Because we don't care if it's 98. Like, that's fine. That would be good. Oh, right? here. That's all, that's all green. What do we do here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So normal is up to... Hmm. Yeah, so you set that... You set, So that would be... Yeah, critical. There you go. And that set that to like 0.2. Okay. There you go. And then that one could be like 0.5. Yeah, that's fine. And that can be, yeah, perfect. Base yeah. severity. Well, I think the problem is, uh, gentlemen, is that I screwed up the data ingest. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about it. We actually told in the uh, so for those of you following along at home, we uh, we posted in the Discord that uh, one of the things you'll get after this is an environment that we will keep up and running. Hmm. Um, and, and to be completely fair, one of the things that we did in this uh, in this show is we were testing out the ability to take our iRacing data from a from our internal sort of tinkering instance and make a copy of it and data gen it into a separate instance. So we didn't have, no offense to you hackers, like you have, like we didn't have all y'all banging around in our, in our private instance where we're kind of building these things. The and uh, it's, it's our development instance. And so we had a little bit of a data gen challenge that happens, but I think we, we took away from this, some of the key things that I wanted to get, which was, you know, we got this, this concept that, you know, you can take here. I want to go to. Let me go up here. I want to go right to. Hang on one second, John. I got this. So got the whole it. idea was, we wanted to get you all the idea that there are metrics, and while metrics are really interesting, they're values that are point in time values that you know can give you an indication of something going on. And in IT, metrics are exactly that. They're designed to give us a real time view of what's happening right now. And using ITSI to take those metrics, start to aggregate them into a, uh, a, a metrics become KPIs that tell us, hey, not only is this metric interesting, but it's really interesting if it reaches certain value levels. Take those value levels and those thresholds that we calculate, turn those into uh, the KPI. The KPIs we then aggregate into the health score of a service, which is 
hey, of all the KPIs that we've put together that we say are our cars, you know, service health, should we be concerned about anything? And then it allows us to drill into those areas of most importance based on color coding, based on service um, service context hmm. that is that's going to be really fun to build. So what we're doing in this, what we're going to challenge you all to do in the tinkering instance after the show is build KPIs for all four of your uh, tires. So start by building a service, call it tire health for your car, and then uh, build the service based on your tire temps. Remember LF temp uh, and find the middle one. It's fine. And then right front, right rear, left rear. And then aggregate, aggregate those and then also build uh, KPIs for the uh, the wear. Keeping in mind that understand your data, right? Wear is how much wear is remaining on the tire. So yeah. how much have we taken away from it? Yep. And start to color code those and play with it. And that will give you some context of, you know, sort of uh, how you can use ITSI. And again, we will uh, come back. We'll send a note out on Discord with details on how to access that lab environment. Again, apologies for the data gen thing happens, but we yeah. are human. We can also include, uh, like my car, we'll mm -hmm. include the deliverables and the final product of that. So then yep. you can dissect that. And, you know, if you get stuck or something and wanting to help fix it yourself, uh, you can have that. Otherwise, as always, Discord, you know, we're always happy to help take questions and, and help answer some questions there. For sure. And we'll, we'll put out a challenge for you all. If you want to, uh, as you start tinkering in the environment, as we send this out, if you want to send us pictures of your KPIs and your services that you build, we'd love to see them. If you want to put them on social, we'd love to. Uh, I'd love to have you see those. Again, we do have the question for everybody that you know: Are you interested in an NASCAR race? That's that's kind of important. I think that'd be fun to see I some of the data. Be too. I like do you think? Fast and turn the left. Do you think we could? Is NASCAR easy enough that we could just like tie a string to your steering wheel and hold it no. left? It's not that easy. Could I, could, not, could I drive? <laughs> I'm no John. We've we saw you. We saw you on track. Uh, you, you did pretty good. I was proud of you. You just got to remember, don't get the wrong, wrong way. way. <laughs> hey, which would help with NASCAR. Oh, that's true. Drive faster and left. <laughs> if, it's, if you're yeah. turning right, it's the wrong way. You know. But the NASCAR, way. you know, I think if we were doing slower cars, absolutely. Oh, okay. faster NASCAR, cars. It's it's a little bit of that's true. Got to feather the gas a bit, you know. Which, that's right. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. Well, <laughs> be sure to tune in next time. We're gonna have. Uh, a, another session uh, digging further into ITSI, where we're going to be talking about how to, you know, not just build one-off uh, KPIs and one-off services, but actually using service templates to create more reusability. And as you can imagine, a lot of these skills we're building here are useful in your day job as a, you know, if you're working in IT operations or SRE, you know, those skills would help you build intelligent templates that you can rinse and repeat and apply to a bunch of different services to be, allow you to broaden the way that you're using KPIs. So we're going to go deeper than just tires in the service. We're going to start to look at things like, you know, driver inputs. We're going to look at, you know, other things going on in the car. We're actually going to look at the track as a service to say things like weather, uh, track conditions, uh, how those are affecting uh, the service. And then we're going to look at something called service dependencies, which is, you know, are the services uh, dependent upon one another uh, and how do they impact each other? So hmm. definitely tune back in June 25th, 12 p.m. Pacific to uh, to come back and we'll get uh, we'll get hands on again. I think we'll probably just expose our dev environment to everybody. But John Labaw, thank you so much for the uh, introduction. Yeah, man. Sorry, guys. Uh, the data didn't work out. That's that's yeah, silly. Right. That's that's silly. But, uh, you know what we'll do? We will make sure that everybody has access to the data uh, if they want it going forward for the weekend and, and going forward from there. Absolutely. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us, buddy. Have a great weekend. Data drivers, we are so thankful for you all. Again, we welcome your feedback. If there are things that you want to see us do in this series, uh, things you want to learn that maybe we haven't taught or that are not on the agenda, challenge us. We're here to uh, we're here to make your experience great. We're here to help you have fun. And frankly, you know, having fun, learning some things that are skills uh, that are useful in your day job, hopefully is uh, valuable to you. So, Thanks, Kyle, for having me in oh, your thank home. You. Yeah, in this was great. The tiny desk. It's, in uh, it's my, incredible. Uh, well read library. Yeah, well yeah. read, very well read. Well, thank you all. Whatever you're into, be data driven and join data drivers, friends.